Go with me to the book of Acts. I, I know I am guilty most of the times when I say I don't intend to preach. I end up preaching. The Lord forgive me, forgive me too. I don't know how I get into preaching even when I am thinking I'm just about teaching. I am intending to teach. In fact, I'm intending just to have a conversation with you this evening. The book of Acts, if you can give me chapter 12, from verse 1, I'll be, I'll be happy. The book of Acts, chapter 12, let me read from my Bible. I will read a couple of verses, and I will be ready to speak. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. Please note that. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. Mm -hmm. Let's read together from here. Verse 3. Is it verse 3 now? And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to false courts of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. Verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Would you have, just, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, go back to that verse. Do you have NIV, that verse? Or King James? Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Give me the new King James. I, there was a word I was looking for. It is not in the, it is in NIV. I read, I read my Bible when I'm done reading here. So, verse 6. Is it verse 6? Yes, verse 6. Give me verse 6, please. It has refused. I better stick to mine then. Mine won't be. Oh, it is come. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Verse 7. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Verse 8. Then the angel said to him, Guard yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Verse 9. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angels was real, but, he, but thought he was seeing a vision. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord, and they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. Verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the head of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Verse 12. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Verse 13, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. Verse 15, but they say to her, you are beside yourself. That's first degree doubt. Yet she kept on insisting that it was so. So they said 
it is his angel. Second degree doubt. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word tonight. I pray that as I speak it, you will speak to your people. Anoint my lips, anoint my tongue. Let the grace to teach be upon me tonight and minister to our lives. Let our faith be ignited in our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Say amen. Say amen. Bishop keeps saying this is the language of the church. All right. I want to share briefly from the scripture we have read. And uh, if I were to give it a title, I simply would call it honest prayer. Just that. Honest prayer. Honest prayer. I want to begin by saying to you, and I want you to write down this statement. That sometimes the sacrifice you have to make to do and to have the things that you want to have is through suffering, is through trials. Because so suffering and trials make you to be somebody else. I will say it one more time. Sometimes the sacrifice you have to pay to be able to have the things and to do the things that you want to do and have is only through trials and suffering because suffering makes you somebody else. When I was reading this scripture, that is what God told me to write down. I said I will share it with you. Let me begin by saying to you that there is no prison that God cannot take you out of. I will say it one more time for somebody in this house tonight. There is no prison that the Lord cannot take you out. Whether it is a marital prison, financial prison, career prison, business prison, whatever kind of prison, there is no prison where God cannot take you out of. Where we have read, it's a story about Peter, the apostle. And the Bible says, from verse 1, when King Herod saw that it pleased the Jews because he had already ordered the execution of James, the Jews were pleased, so he thought, to please them more, he would get a hold of Peter and also kill him as well. I came to tell somebody today that what killed others will not kill you. So he got hold of Peter. And because it was during the days of unleavened bread or Passover, he kept Peter in prison. And Peter was kept in prison between two soldiers. And he was being guarded by four squads of soldiers. And a squad comprised of about four soldiers. He was being guarded in the prison by 16 soldiers. The Bible says that he had chains on his hands and on his feet. He, they removed his clothes and his sandals. And they put him into the prison cell. Between Peter and the outside world, he was separated by the chains, by the two soldiers that stood by him, and the 16 soldiers that guarded the prison. Between Peter and the outside world, he was separated by two iron gates. But between Peter and God, nothing separated him. Nothing separated him. The Bible says while he was sleeping. I thought sleeping was bad. While he was sleeping, the Bible says an angel of the Lord came and struck him up. In other words, Peter was so dead asleep that even a little tap or nudge could not wake him up. He had to be struck to wake up from sleep. 
He was so deeply asleep. He was in trouble, but trouble was not in him. He was, I actually think that in the entire city of Jerusalem that night, the only Christian that slept that night was Peter. Because we have read that where others were gathered together praying, they were making earnest and ceasing prayers for Peter. Peter was the only Christian that slept that night. The rest were praying, God, release our brother in the name of Jesus. Destroy those counsel of the, of the Sanhedrins and the advisors. They were praying for Peter. But Peter was busy sleeping. Sometimes I wonder, why was Peter sleeping like that? When he knew the determination of Herod. When he knew what had already happened to James. Some of us, I am telling you, could not have slept that night. We couldn't have slept. But Peter was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? Of course, number one, there were Christians that were praying for him. But that is not the real reason why Peter was sleeping. There must have been something in the life and in the heart of Peter that made Peter to have so much ease and calmness that is given by the Spirit of God in the midst of trouble. Because this Peter is totally different from the Peter whom Jesus was telling that before the cock crows three times, you, the crows you will have denied me three times. And you remember the story of Peter, how he denied Jesus, how he would run away and say, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even know the men. So there must have been something that happened in the life of Peter that made him a totally different person. One of those things that happened to Peter is that he had heard some word from God that made him different from the way he was before. Before he was Simon. And Simon means a reed shaken by the weed. He was wobbling. But something happened to him after Pentecost. When he was filled of the Holy Ghost, he became a different man. There is you that you have never seen. And that you that you have never seen will begin to do great things for God when you allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you and fill you over. You will begin to wake up with some level of boldness and power and people will begin to wonder what happened to this guy. In the book of First Peter, all the way to the book chapter 12, I mean, the book of Acts chapter 1, all the way to chapter 12 where we have read, you will see in the entire scriptures of the book of Acts, Peter is more and more identified with prayer. In the book of Acts chapter 1, the Bible says that they went to the upper room, Peter and John and the rest were there together praying. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. And when they started preaching and 3,000 people, Peter is actually the one who stood and said to the men and said to them, these guys are not drunk as you suppose, but they are filled of the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus whom you, who you, whom you crucified the other day. And the Bible says 3,000 people believed. Then Sanhedrin came together and wanted to put them in prison. But the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 that Peter together with the other disciples went together to pray. In the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says that Peter and John were going to the temple in the hour of prayer. You see, he is identified with prayer. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 8 that when Philip went to Samaria to preach, whom did they call for to come and pray for them, to lay hands on them for the infilling of the Holy Ghost? The Bible said they called for Peter. 
And Peter went there, laid his head, and they received the Holy Ghost. What was happening in the book of Acts chapter 9? The Bible said there was a woman named Dorcas who died. And when she died, what did they do? They said, call for Peter. So when Peter came, the Bible says she closed the room by himself and prayed over her dead body. And this lady came back to life. Peter is being more and more identified in the Bible with prayer. In the book of Acts 10, the Bible says that Peter was in a place called Joppa where he had gone to the rooftop to pray and God gave him a vision. This kind of man is not the kind of a guy who would be scared by a herald who would say that he is going to slay his life. He was a prayerful man. There is something I call a prayer bank. I have never seen it in the Bible. I just said I called. Don't say I couldn't have scripture, okay? But I call it so because I have observed people who are prayerful and people who love God. And they pray over things that will happen in years to come. They bank prayers. They, are, they don't even have children, but they are praying for their children. They are praying for their children's husbands and wives. They are praying for their children's businesses. They are banking prayers. Those children can never be the same like someone who has got not bank any prayer. It's not possible. You have been coming every Tuesday, coming every week this week, and you think it's a waste of time. I came to encourage you, my brother, my sister. No, you are banking prayers for the year. You are banking prayers for the year so that when you get to a certain place and there is a challenge, you will become knowing that I prayed and I believe that God will hear my prayer. Some of us would not be here had not it been for our parents who prayed in advance. When I was informed to, <laughs> just remembered Bishop giving an example here about himself. Informed. I don't know what happens in informed to anyway. I was, <laughs> I had become a rowdy boy. Terrible. And I don't want to tell you how terrible I was. When I see myself and I say, oh Lord, I thank you. Because today perhaps I would not even, I would be dead. I mean, I, I was a rowdy boy. Rowdy. In fact, even my own siblings tell me, he, but it's not for my mother and my father. Walika na wewe bumper kwa bumper, it would have been terrible. But I remember one time, when I was informed to, I was so broke in school. And I wrote a letter to my father. Those days there was no SMS. Okay, no WhatsApp, no email, no nothing. You had to write a letter, go to the post office. Some of you don't even know what a post office is. <laughs> Just kidding. Buy stamps and you post the letter. It takes about seven or so days to get to where you have, you have addressed it to. And I simply had written to my dad, dad. In vernacular, my dad was not an educated man. So I had written to him in vernacular, telling him that I needed money. I had no pocket money. And he responded to my letter. And he also wrote me a letter. And he wrote, I still remember the handwriting of my dad. I see it even now. It was a piece of paper from an exercise book. I can see it. And I can see even the signature he had signed there. And how he had written it, my son, in vernacular, that is. <laughs> and then he said to me, we don't have money, but I, I have only sent you 40 shillings. And those were two 20 shillings notes. That was a lot of money anyway. Yes, that was a lot of money. But I did not know, now this is what he, they came to tell me much later. I did not know that my father with my mother, join hands over the money and the letter they wrote to me. And they prayed and said, Father, in the name of Jesus, as this boy gets hold of this letter, and he opens the letter, takes the money to go and buy bread, may you convince 
pick him and snatch him from the wayward way and bring him back into the fold of Jesus. I did not know. So I took the money, went and I bought bread. We used to call it a quarter of a loaf in our school. A quarter of a loaf of bread in our school we used to call it Akiara. Akiara is one finger, meaning one bob. <laughs> so I bought and I ate. That night when I went to sleep, I could not sleep. I woke up, there was a friend of mine called Silas. Lathaya, I still remember that guy. And I told him, man, I can't sleep. I need to get saved again. I need to rededicate. So he said, come on, let's go to the power house. We used to have a room in school called power house. And he took me there. And he told me, kneel down. A young man, but full of the spirit. And he laid hands on me. And he prayed over me. And as soon as he prayed, I felt like there was a heavy load that rolled off my shoulders. And I rededicated my life to God. Because of prayers that were banked by somebody. You may not have any need. Well, I don't think that is really possible practically. But even if you don't have any need, please don't get tired of coming to the house of the Lord. And bank prayers. At the beginning of the year, commit every Tuesday to God. Every Monday, every Wednesday, every Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and, and Monday. Committing every, that's what I do. I commit every morning of every single day, every evening, every noon time, every midnight hour, every day, every night, every month. That wherever I go, God, you will be with me. That made Peter totally different from the rest of the people. To bank prayers. Be praying for your children. They are in kindergarten right now, but be praying for them in the university. Now, when I was reading that scripture, I actually thought that that really was the reason why Peter was sleeping. But the Holy Spirit told me something. There's something I want to show you. And the Holy Spirit took me to the book of John. Take me to the book of John, the last chapter. Chapter 21. Chapter 21. John, chapter 21. I want to read from verse 17. Or 15. Verse 15. 15. So, when they had eaten breakfast. Now, this is after Jesus had already been crucified. He's crucified. They see him dead. They see him buried. And Peter says, I am going back fishing. And he goes. He says, I am going back fishing. And some of the disciples also went with him. So they went back fishing. So then Jesus comes after he has resurrected. He comes. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my loves. Verse 17. He said to him, Oh, go, go back to verse 16, sorry. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jorah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. Verse 17. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah. You know, this reminds me of children. Dad, utaninunuli ice cream. Then you pretend you have not had. Then the second time, until it got into his nerves. Do you love me? Peter was grieved. Because he said to him at that time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Verse 18. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you are younger, you guarded yourself. And walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands 
and another will guard you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, but Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Go back to verse 17. My interest is verse 17. Verse 17. He said to him, the third time, Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him, the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Verse 18. I want to show you something. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you are younger, you will guarded yourself and walked wherever you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will guard you and carry you where you do not wish. And he spoke to Peter to tell him by what death he was to die and glorify God. That he was to be so old that even dressing himself up, he will have to be dressed by somebody. And that is why when Peter was put in prison, was there sleeping knowing the words of the Alpha and the Omega. Who is the God of all creation? Who does not lie? He is not a man that he should change his mind. If he has said it, he will do it. If he told Peter he would be so old, Peter knew for sure I cannot die today. But was it only this word that really made Peter sleep like that? Now the Spirit said, it's not just those words. Because most people would have been told those words, but still they wouldn't have been able to sleep. They would have been worried. Peter's confidence was on the God who said those words. It wasn't so much on what was said, it was so much on the God who said those words. There's a difference between the word of God and God of the word. Most people know the word of God, but they do not know the God of that word. That is why God can tell you something, but you are still worried about it. Because you do not know the God who said it. If I had a million dollars in my account today and I gave you a piece of paper we call a check and I only write or draw a check for you for only a hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollars and you know that I have a million dollars in my account and I am giving you a hundred dollars hundred thousand dollars wouldn't you not even start planning what you're going to do with the money would you not Yet, what I have given you is not money. It is a promissory note that you go. It is not money, but it is a promissory note that with this note you will access 100,000 king shillings from my account. God's word is a promissory note to you that I have these things. All I need from you is to have faith and trust. Let me tell you what trust means. Because most people don't know how to trust. To trust means to rely upon. To trust means to rest assured. To trust means to have confidence in. And you have confidence in the nature and the character and the integrity of the other person. If you find yourself not trustful even after you have prayed, 
find yourself worrying is because you don't have trust in the person who has said what he has said in his word. Because you do not know that person yet. If you knew that person, you would rest assured. That's what Peter was doing. He was rest assured. I can't die here. And I can't die today. And the Bible says, the angel came struck with a harp. And he was led out of the prison. And when the angel spoke, the chains fell off. The, op the, the, the gate of the prison just opened by its own self. That's what the Bible says. It just opened by its own accord. And as soon as they had gone out, the gate closed itself. And he went. And he found brethren together praying and seizing prayer. Honest prayer means and seizing and adding. You must persist in praying and ceasingly and ending. Even until you see it happen. Even when people are giving up. What I like about this scripture is that the same guards who are guarding Peter in prison, the Bible says the following day. Herod came and he summoned for Peter to be brought, but he was not in prison. And there was such a commotion in the prison because they couldn't understand how someone who had been bound, had been guarded by more than 16 soldiers, could disappear and nobody has a clue. And the Bible says that they were executed because of that. And that is how God turns tables and that is how God will turn tables for you this year. He will turn tables so much that when you begin to walk, you will wonder, is it real or am I dreaming? And you realize, for real, it is me driving my Prado. You realize it is me going for holidays in Hawaii. It will be so big, you say, oh my God, is it me? And then you realize for sure, have you ever been blessed until you begin to pinch yourself to see, am I still, am I, it is, is it me? That is the kind of blessing God is. He's going to open doors. Not by you, by himself. He will, he will just send his angels to open doors for you. And walk into your greatness. Walk into your liberty. Walk into your freedom. Walk into your excellence. Walk into your abundance. And walk into your greatness. Walk into your achievement. And you begin to glorify. The story doesn't end there. After those gods were executed, the Bible says that later Herod moved to a different city. Where an angel of the Lord struck him and he was eaten up by worms. Every herald in your life, God is sending an angel to strike them and they will be eaten up by the worms in the name of Jesus. Never give up on yourself and never give up on God. Pray until you pray and seize him. Like Elijah in the book of 1 Kings 18. Go read it on your way home or at home. Going downwards. 18 verse 1. Going downward. It was God who had told Elijah, I will set the rain. Can you just put it and I close with this? Just put it. So that you don't think I, I just created a story. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go. Present yourself to who? To Ahab. And I will said, I will said rain. It wasn't Elijah's idea. It was God's instruction. Yet the Bible says that Elijah prayed seven times. He would pray and would say to his servant, go and check. He would come back, there is nothing. He would pray again and it is God who has said. So there are some things God has said over you but you have to pray. That's why we are praying and fasting. Until we see the manifestation of God in our lives. Stand up and find a place of prayer.